Hey everybody, my name's Ryan and here at eTrailer we install, test fit, and review a lot of different parts. That way we could try to answer any questions those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing here today on our 2020 Toyota Sienna. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the eTrailer.com Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver. With these Sienna vans being very capable vehicles, people tend to use them to do a little bit of everything. I know I personally see them going down the road, towing trailers, and using just about every type of accessory. So if it were me and I was looking for a hitch for my Sienna, I would want one that would be able to handle pretty much anything you want to throw at it. And the sea trailer hitch is going to be able to do just that. So this is going to be a class 3 hitch, and it's going to have that 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube open. It's a very common size and a ton of different accessories will work out with it. It's going to have a reinforced collar for extra strength and the standard 5 8 pinhole. Now keep in mind a pin and clip does not come included, but if you need one, you can find it right here at eTrailer. We are going to have plate style safety chain openings, which aren't huge, but they will give us enough room to use just about any size hook that we might have. The hitch is also going to give us some pretty good weight capacities. As far as the maximum gross tongue weight rating goes, it's going to be 350 pounds. And that's going to be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So that's good for those one to four bike racks, just to give you an example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, it's going to be 3,500 pounds. And that's going to be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of your trailer, plus anything that you might have on it. Now this can be used with a weight distribution system, which is a separate component. And when you use that, what it's gonna do is help keep your van and your trailer nice and level as you're going down the road. When you do use that, the weight capacities do increase a little bit. Maximum gross tongue weight rating goes up to 500 pounds, and the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes up to 5,000 pounds. However, I do always like to suggest, never a bad idea just to check your Sienna's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your Toyota can pull that much weight safely. So to help give us that nice appearance, the hitch is going to sit back a little bit. And with that being said, we can take a couple of measurements. That way we can make sure all of our accessories will work with it. You go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the very edge of our bumper. It's going to be right at five inches. So we can use that measurement to figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. If you measure from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be right at 12 inches. And we can use that measurement to figure out if we need to get a ball mount with a drop or a rise. In this case, and at that measurement, chances are really good you'll need a ball mount with a slight rise. So at the end of the day, a hitch you really can't go wrong with. You can use it to do just about anything. And in my opinion, I think it's going to look really good too. It's going to have that matte black carbide finish that's going to keep it in great shape for years to come. Now as far as the installation goes, it's really not too bad. Ain't a whole lot involved, but it will take a little bit of time. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be working here underneath the back of our Sienna. And the first thing that we need to do is remove this underbody panel. Now, chances are good, yours is probably going to look a little bit different. Our customer had already chosen to trim their underbody panel out, but no big deal. It still attaches the same way and everything else. I just wanted to mention that. So this is going to be held in place with three different types of fasteners. And the first ones that we're going to take out are these pushpin style ones here. So there's going to be a handful of them, ones with the white heads. What you're going to do is take a flat head screwdriver, kind of pry underneath it. And if the head pops out with the, without the base, no big deal. You can just kind of pry underneath the base of it as well. So I'll go ahead and do that to get the rest of these removed. Then we can move to the very outside edge right here. We're going to have a total of five screws that we need to remove. So I'll take a 10 millimeter socket and pull those out. Now 
Then we're gonna have a total of four fasteners just like this. Now the way to get those out, you can take a large screwdriver and just rotate it. These actually aren't going to come completely out. They'll stay with the underbody panel. But if the underbody panel doesn't wanna drop down, sometimes you kinda of have to put some downward pressure on it while you're spinning it. So one on each side here. and two in the center. Now these are the last things holding the panel up, so definitely wanna kinda of support it with your hand, that way it doesn't fall on you. And once we have it released, we can just set it off to the side. Now on the bottom of our frame rail, we're gonna have some stickers that we need to remove. So we're gonna have three of them. This one here, this one here, and this one here. This plug you can actually leave in so you don't have to worry about it. But as I said, these are just stickers so you can kind of take a flathead screwdriver, and pry underneath them and get them removed. Now I do wanna mention from this point on, anything we do to the side of our vehicle, we're also gonna repeat on the other side, so we set up the same way. Now we can lower our exhaust down a little bit to give us some extra room to work. Before we do that, what I'm gonna do is take a strap and just run it from side to side. That way the exhaust will have a little bit of support. So we're gonna have one rubber exhaust isolator hanger that we're gonna to need to take off here on the passenger side. It's right here. What you wanna do is spray it down with some soapy water or penetrating oil, it makes it a little bit easier. Then you can take a pry bar and just work one end of that hanger off of our exhaust. So now let's go ahead and go over our attachment points. It'll be the same on each side. There's going to be a total of three. This one here, here, and here. These are threaded weld nuts. So I do suggest taking a tube brush and kind of cleaning out any dirt or debris that may have gotten trapped inside. And as far as the hardware that we're going to use to secure the hitch, it's going to be the same for all those attachment points. We're going to have a hex bolt and a conical tooth washer and make sure the teeth on the washer are gonna face up towards the hitch. So when we're holding the hitch up, we're gonna take our hardware and the bolts are simply just going to thread right into those factory weld nuts. Now at this point, you would need to trim your underbody panel. Now, ours is already cut and I wanna mention this area here is the portion that you need to cut out. This larger section here, the customer did that themselves and that's how they wanted it. So with that being said, you really only need to focus on this area. There's a diagram and in the instructions that tell you exactly where you need to cut. And how you would do that is really simple. This is pretty thin plastic, so you don't need any crazy tools or anything like that. I like to use a pair of 10 snips. You can also use a regular pair of snips or I've also had luck just using a sharp utility knife to get that area trimmed out. So once you have your underbody panel trimmed out, you can reinstall it the opposite way that you removed it. Now with an extra set of hands, we can take our hitch and raise it into position. So you want to go up and over your tailpipe. We'll line up the hitch with the holes in the frame rail. And you want to get at least one bolt started on each side, hand tight. That way the hitch will support itself while we work on the rest of them. Now that we have all of our hardware in place and hand tight, we can come back with a 19 millimeter socket and snug it all down. Now 
Now that we have all of our hardware in place and snug, we can come back with a torque wrench and tighten it all down to the amount specified in our instructions. Now we can rehang our exhaust. So I sprayed it down with some lubricant again. And this time I'm just gonna kind of bend that hanger back with my hand, push up on the tailpipe and line everything back up. With the exhaust now secure, don't forget to remove your strap. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 Toyota Sienna.